in the final chapter of Lumen Fidei, Pope Francis speaks of the very practical implications of our faith. He notes that faith isn't merely a journey, but it's also about building something, building a just society, a city as he calls it. He begins by reflecting upon the way Abraham began his life of faith, dwelling in a tent when God called him and spoke to him and showed him the great city that would become his people. And Abraham looked forward to the day when his descendants would form this great city, a city whose foundations were God himself. See, when God is the foundation of a city, we can build a just society. When you think about it, if God is love, if God is justice, if God is peace, all these qualities that we attribute to God, they become the foundations of the city. So it's important for the city to be rooted in this faith if we want to have a just society. Um, the Pope mentions that this just society we're talking about isn't merely the society that we think of when we talk about the eternal city that we hope to live in um, forever once we pass from this earth, but he also says we need to build up a just society here on earth. And he begins by noting that the first place that we form a just society, the first place where faith is lived out, is of course in the family. He said that in the union of man and woman in marriage, we see a sign of God's love right there. And he speaks to the way in which we see that sexual differentiation is a good thing. You know, think about this in contrast to our modern world, which doesn't view sexual differentiation as a good thing. Instead, it tries to conflate sexuality and just say, you know, well, everybody's the same. Just have, you know, sex with whoever you want. And men can be women, women can be men, all these types of things. But the church doesn't teach that. We say, no, God created sexual differentiation, and it's a good thing. It's something to be valued. So men and women are, in fact, different from each other, not in dignity, but they are different from each other. And that's a good thing. That's something to be celebrated. So femininity should be celebrated. Masculinity should be celebrated. And they shouldn't be conflated. We shouldn't be telling women they need to be more like men or men they need to be more like women. Instead, we should celebrate this great differentiation that we have. The Pope continues to talk about children. And he talks about the way that children, when we see them through the light of faith, we see a greater depth to God's plan. We see a greater depth to the mystery of being entrusted with a new person. And I think that's a very powerful statement. I think most parents know when they first hold their, their child that they sit here and they say, oh my goodness, I've been entrusted with this great gift, this, this human person who I am supposed to, to raise. And children, therefore, look to parents as models of their faith. And the Pope says, therefore, it's important for parents to actually exemplify faith in their life, to participate in faith themselves, but also to encourage their children to share their faith. And parents themselves should be sharing their faith with their children, for this is how the faith is passed on. But it's also how we build these firm roots for our society. And so we can build a society that's just and that's um, a society that's for the benefit of all people. And the Pope also notes something very important. He says, while a lot of youth struggle with their faith and go through these periods where the world is very confusing to them, he says, there's a sense in which we know they take joy in their faith. You know, they might not always show it at times, but he said, look at events like World Youth Day, and he specifically points to those events. Um, this was written, of course, before the recent uh, World Youth Day in, in Rio, but we saw it there, certainly. And we see people who are on fire for their faith, young people on fire for their faith. And that's what he said we get when people are encouraged to live out their faith. You see, at these World Youth Days, all people are supported in living out their faith. And we see the fire of faith really take its course in the world. And that's what the Pope is calling us to do, is to support the youth in their faith, to support our children in their faith, so that they can, in fact, live out their faith. They want to live it out, as he says. They just need that support to do so. And so it becomes important for parents to understand their role within the family is to support and encourage their children in faith. Now, the family unit then can build up faith in a larger society. Now, one of the things the Pope notes is that in modernity, the way in which we see this is we talk about the brotherhood of humanity, but we do so without relationship to a greater, to, to the Father. And he says that what happens is ultimately we learn that this can't endure. A brotherhood that's not grounded in anything doesn't endure. He said our brotherhood as human beings comes from the fact that we do have 
the same Father, that we're all united in our relationship with God. And that's an important point for us to remember because if we're to endure, if we're to actually truly give meaning to this phrase, you know, the brothership amongst human beings, we need to remember that that brothership, that brotherhood, sorry, implies a Father, implies someone greater from whom we acquire this um, brotherhood. And ultimately, that person is Jesus Christ himself, the, the gift of the Father come down from heaven. But what we also say when we talk about our brotherhood is that we're saying that God has bestowed his grace upon every human being, and he does so without discrimination. So he doesn't discriminate against people based on race, based on sexual orientation, based on gender or anything like that. He sends his love, his grace upon all people. And so we are united in the fact that all of us have been enlightened by the love of God, whether we realize it or not. And therefore, for a Catholic, every human being that we encounter is in fact a manifestation of God's grace. Um, And that becomes important for us because it's how we're going to build this just society. See, if we don't view people as being our brothers and having that same dignity, having that same grace bestowed upon them as we have, what can easily happen is we begin to form an elitist culture where I view myself as somehow better based on whatever criterion I choose than you or some other group of people. And then therefore I can do things like I can manipulate, I can treat one group of people as being lesser in some way or another. But when I realize that Everybody has been given grace by God and that he sheds his love upon all people and has a profound love for all people. Well, then if I'm a son or daughter of God, I need to realize that so is every other human being. And if I'm loved by God, so is every other human being. And therefore, I need to form a loving relationship with other people. So the basis of our forming loving and brotherly relationships with one another is rooted in the fact that we are first loved by God our Father. And we see that love ultimately in the person of Jesus Christ and in giving his life for all people, not just for one group of people or not just for the people who believe in him, but for all people. We realize that Christ has bestowed this great gift upon every human being and has seeing the dignity in every human being. And being connected to Christ means that we too are called to be connected to one another in a way in which we can see the dignity of every human being. Now see, when we see this dignity of every human being, therefore what we're called to do is to form societies that are respectful of every human being's dignity. So we need to form governments that are just, that will seek justice, not just for their own constituents, not just for an elite group of people, but for the entire world. This is what we refer to when we talk about the the common good. We're talking about retreating each human being with a dignity that comes from somebody who is loved by God, somebody who Christ himself died for. It's also something interesting that the Pope notes as he said that when we understand God is our Father and understand our brotherhood in that terms, forgiveness all of a sudden becomes possible. He said because all of a sudden what happens is that we realize that God is the source that trumps everything else. God's power trumps everything else. We realize that division is not the ultimate power, but unity is. So this union with God trumps everything. And because we seek union with God, implicitly we seek union with everybody else because God wants a loving relationship with every human being. And if we want union with God, then ultimately what we want is a loving relationship with every human being. And the only way we can have that is, of course, if we're willing to enter into these relationships where we realize that forgiveness is at the heart of our relationship. So when we're hurt by our brother and sister, we don't seek war, we don't seek division, we don't seek uh, oppression or anything like that, or vengeance, even worse. Rather, what we should seek is forgiveness and unity. And that's what we learn uh, when we realize that God is our Father. We realize that our source is in Him. And not only that, but that we are therefore united to every human being here on earth. The Pope ends this chapter by talking about suffering. Because he does note that he's talking about, you know, creating all these just societies and this world where forgiveness is possible. And then he talks about suffering because he said, let's not for a second pretend that we're creating a utopian society or living in some kind of a fantasy world. And he says our faith has to actually address this issue of suffering that we see in our world. And what he says is that in our weakness, in our sufferings, we discover God's power because we realize that in our own suffering, we are united with Christ who suffered for us. So our sufferings can in fact have meaning insofar as we unite them to Christ who suffered for us. 
But then he also notes that by suffering, by accepting our suffering, what we do is we ultimately proclaim not ourselves, not our individual selves, but Jesus Christ as Lord. We say that this world isn't ultimately about me, about my desires, about what I want, but it's about Christ and it's about seeking union with him. He also notes that in death, which many people view as the ultimate form of suffering, is the fact that we all know that we're going to die, that we're going to leave this world. But he said, even in death, we can have this union with God. Because ultimately, what we as people of faith see in death isn't an ultimate end of the world, but rather it's this great call to go forth from our own land. It's a response to God's call to come, to be united with him. So death ultimately isn't seen as this great tragedy, but rather it's seen as that step to following God and ultimately to being united with him. The Pope ends his reflection on faith by speaking of Mary, of course. And Mary, he says, is the perfect model of faith. She's the one who heard the word of God and in hearing the word of God, she received it with joy and gave birth to the word of God. And the Pope says that our lives of faith only become fulfilled when we receive God's word with joy. He said, when we receive our faith with joy, all of a sudden we can live it out in our world and we can bear good fruit. And that ultimately is the point of our faith. And he also does make the final note that receiving that word means that what we're giving birth to is, of course, the word of God, not ourselves. He says everything revolves around this word of God, which, of course, is Jesus Christ himself. And so as people of faith, we are called not to proclaim ourselves, but we're called to build this city where we're constantly proclaiming Jesus Christ is Lord.